don't need to zoom in, don't need to zoom out. Zoom in maybe a little. No, too close. Too far. That's good. Wait. So as my business is growing and the YouTube channel is growing, my biggest question I think that I've gotten so far has been how did I get started as a jeweler? How did I become a jeweler? How did I teach myself? And all of those things. So first I wanna say that if you told me five years ago that I would be making and selling jewelry and become a jeweler, this would have come out of left field so much that I would never have believed it. I'm just as shocked as everyone else. So I just wanna say that. Nothing about my story is unique to this. So if I can learn how to do this, then so can you. And if you have had that desire since you were young, then you're just that much better off than me. I honestly feel like I stumbled into making jewelry. I never wanted to be a jeweler. I never even thought about making jewelry growing up. For a real reference, I'm 28. I'll be 28 in two days. But I never wanted to be a jeweler. It was never anything that crossed my mind. So, so I guess first off, I've always loved jewelry. I've always loved earrings and I loved big earrings. I've never been like a dainty earring person. And I would always buy cheap jewelry too, like $5, six, eight, $10 earrings. I would always go to Burke's outlet after I got paid because they would always get the good jewelry from Dillard's that would get put on their racks and they were super cheap and really pretty costume jewelry. But I never had fine jewelry. I don't think I had a, a ring passed down to me until I was in my mid 20s and I've never owned any fine jewelry before. So having said all of that, I'm sure you're wondering how the fuck I started doing this. So this all started with clay jewelry. So. During that time when everyone had to stay indoors, we were over here in England, and I know every country, state handled that whole thing very differently, but in England we were very, very, very much shut indoors for almost two years. It was very strict here. So I was really bored and I remember going to Hobbycraft and I bought some clay and it was right when clay jewelry started becoming a big thing. And I bought some clay and I just wanted to do something like anything i had no intention of making it to sell it i just wanted to make it and so i bought some clay but it was like a coral color earrings with like little dangly bits and i remember making them and i wore them to work the next day and a few of my co-workers were complimenting my earrings and saying that they would buy some if I made them a pair. And that's where it started, was I made one or two pairs and then someone said that they would buy them. And I was like, hmm. I've always wanted to start a business, I just never knew what it would be. And I dabbled with blogs and building websites before in the past. And so as soon as someone said I would like to buy these, I was like, okay, what can I do with this? Like, I this is something, I don't know what it is. Is, but I can do something with it. So if I decide to do something, I go all in. And sometimes that's not a good thing, but in this case it was, but I went all in. I only had the opinions of a few people saying they wanted to buy it. And I went and made a whole website for it. I made a small collection of clay earrings and photographed it, made a website, put them on the website. I ordered stamps and jewelry cards, like earring cards, the whole works. And they did really well. Yeah, I started with clay and I sold clay earrings for almost a year, maybe a little less than a year. And I loved it. It was so much fun for me and um, it was good side money. I really liked it. And then eventually I started getting the idea though that I wanted to make things that could last longer than clay jewelry because although it was fun, it was still costume jewelry and that they don't last forever. They break and all those things. But I decided that I wanted to start making things that were more permanent and could last longer. I ended up finding this turquoise ring that this lady was selling at, at our local store. And it was so beautiful. It had two little circle pieces of turquoise. You could tell it was handmade. Had a bunch of granulation on it and a lot of detail work. And I remember buying that ring. It was the first real silver ring I'd ever bought. Everything up until then was just like costume jewelry. And I remember just staring at it and thinking like I want to make stuff like this this is what I want to make and that ring like that specific ring made me go down the rabbit hole of silversmithing so I kept making clay jewelry but I was using that money to buy tools 
for silversmithing and buy silver and solder paste and solder chips. And I just started Googling and going on YouTube and I found everything I needed to just get this small basic package of tools, which I will be making a video about like your the basic set of tools that you need. Although I do have on my Amazon storefront, I have it already linked a little package of your basic tools that you need to first start, your basic tools for soldering that you need. But anyway, I used the money from my clay part of my business to buy tools for silversmithing and silver and I just started practicing and so I was fulfilling orders for clay while I was practicing silver jewelry and I just started with a basic ring just a 1.5 millimeter band and just soldering that together and until I got soldering down then I moved on to bezel strips and cabochon stones with the flat backs and everything I learned from soldering and creating bezel cups I learned on YouTube and and googling and books and on Honestly, trial and error. Even though I was watching YouTube videos and reading books, I still had to practice. I wasn't great at soldering for a very long time. If you haven't seen my soldering tips video, I'll put it up here right now. But yeah, soldering was like my biggest pain point. And the only way that I got better at it was with practice and ruining rings and ruining silver. You can watch all the videos, you can read all of the books, but if you don't practice, if you don't just do the act of making or trying, you will never learn. Most of my learning has come from just practice and just figuring it out as I go. I know it's not the answer that everyone wants to hear, but you're going to get so much further with just doing it than waiting and feeling like you need someone to tell you the answer, to tell you how to do it. Because people can tell you, but the act of doing it is always very different. Another reason why I feel like I grew my skills quickly was because I was practicing every day. I became so obsessed with this. I would go to work and then come home and stay up until midnight, 1am, and just be practicing and making ugly rings and learning and it was just because I was so obsessed and I loved I was loving it so much so as I was growing my silversmithing skills and learning how to set cabochon stone once I felt like my my rings with the cabochon stones were good and I don't say perfect because if I waited until anything was perfect I would not be here right now once everything was good I started adding it to um, to my website and people loved it and it was at a good like medium price point so yes people were buying my clay jewelry that was a lot cheaper but they were okay with spending 20 or 30 dollars more on a small dainty silver ring so I started adding my silver onto my website as well so I was selling clay and silver at the same time and I started teaching myself how to do claw settings and I started using that money to buy nicer gemstones and once I got that good I added it to my website and I was selling those once I felt like I had built like the interest in the silver jewelry and I was selling enough of the silver jewelry to make up for the clay I let everyone know there will be no more clay I didn't want to keep spreading myself thin and doing two very very different things I knew that I wanted to be known for one thing and it either needed to be clay or it needed to be silver and I was I'm not gonna lie once I started working with silver I was so checked out of the clay part for me it was an easy choice and I just deleted everything from the website and only left the silver. Once I started doing only silver I just kind of repeated the process and any money that I made from silver I reinvested in tools because the tools list never ends for silversmithing. I feel like I'm finally in a place where I'll be okay if I don't buy any more tools for a while. There's still a bunch of pretty expensive ones that are on my wish list. I've just been reinvesting this entire time in tools and things to make the work easier, to make me more proficient, to make my work more clean, and my jewelry's become more higher priced because my tools are more expensive, my gemstones are more expensive. I started working with gold. So once I taught myself uh, how to solder the cabochon stones, claw settings, then I wanted to learn how to do flush settings, which is very, very, very hard. I practiced a lot on my own, but I felt like at some point I needed to invest some of that money in myself and take a class. The class was a basic stone setting class, and it was claw settings and flush and grain settings. All of those things I had tried on my own already, but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't teaching myself any bad habits. And so I did pay for that class and I went to it. It was a three-day class. And yeah, I'm not going to say much about it other than I don't think I really needed it. A lot of the stuff that I learned, I had already known from researching it myself. And it also wasn't very organized. 
used but i don't think it was the guy's fault he was filling in for someone so it was fine but yeah it just didn't go very well but by investing in that class and it not going very well it just taught me to trust myself like trust myself trust my learning process and and that i can find everything that i need online and that if something works for me the way that i'm doing it then it's okay obviously there's always going to be a better way to do something but you don't have to pay four or five a thousand dollars for a class for someone to show you how to do it better if the way that you're doing it is already working especially if you can't afford it so i yeah that class was a, an interesting experience but did give me though was a confidence boost it just taught me to just further trust myself and teaching myself and that i can do this on my own so after taking that stone setting class i really had a whole different mindset when it came to setting stones flush settings and grain settings i was more in the state that like i don't need anyone's help you know what i mean not in like a bad way i don't need to spend the money just to feel confident that i was formally trained i just went in very confidently and just bought everything i needed to practice and just started practicing every day i used a silver band and i just flush set all day for a few days in a row until I felt good about it. So after I taught myself how to do cabochon stones and claw settings, I started getting into wax carving and lost wax casting. I love an or the organic look of jewelry and all the textures and all of those things. So I, I bought some wax and some wax carving tools and I just started playing with it and playing with designs. And I found a caster here in England through Google. I gave them a call, asked them all of my questions and I mailed them some of the rings that I had carved that were not very pretty and they mailed them back and every single time I have made rings in wax and then mailed it to be casted, I've learned something different every time. So again, you don't want to wait until everything is perfect to do it. My first few rings that I mailed, I'm sure they opened the package and thought, damn, like, <laughs> But I taught myself how to wax carve and, and what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And there's some information on wax carving out there, but there's not as much as there is about silversmithing. So that really was a trial and error, but that for me is like my bread and butter. I love wax carving. There's so many methods of making jewelry and you just have to find the one that's right for you and the one that helps you achieve the look that you want. And for me, that's wax carving. So that's the road that I've been going down is wax carving and that's where I'm at right now. And some Sometimes I go back and I use bezel wire and I make earrings and all those things but typically my jewelry is carved in wax and I have it casted and I have it casted because casting jewelry in itself is, is a whole nother skill it is really hard to do but not only that the equipment for it is very expensive and you can sand cast but you can't do a lot of the detailed pieces with sand casting so I choose to outsource that part and a lot of jewelers outsource the casting part i would love one day to do that to have a casting setup and cast in-house it would save me a ton of time and i think it would be fun to learn but for right now i do outsource my casting so yeah that's where i am now i run my jewelry business right now full time only because we're moving soon not because my business is wildly successful and i can work from home and you know do this full time i wish that's the way that it was but i'm slowly slowly growing and I have been slowly growing for the last two years and I think I said this before in my first video but I am glad that I had slow growth because if I blew up when I was making clay then people would only be interested in the clay. If I blew up when I was making my jewelry when I only was using bezel wire and back plates and that style I would have never been able to do what I'm doing now. Now I'm seeing like more exponential growth in my TikTok and Instagram and all of those things and although I love every Everything that I made in each stage, each phase, I always felt like I wasn't quite there yet. I didn't feel like what I was making was fully connecting with me. I don't know if that makes any sense. I don't know. I just didn't have that connection. But now with the jewelry that I've been making more recently, I just feel, I don't know. I just never expected that I would be able to be producing jewelry that looks like this. And I'm just very proud and thankful. And if things blew up now, I feel like this is what I would want people to see. This is These are the rings I want people to fall in love with. These are the earrings I want people to fall in love with. I'm glad I let myself evolve and that as much as I wanted to grow my business back then, I'm glad it's taken this long because now I can grow in, in this space and with these you know pieces. For me, I'm still trying to grow it. I would love one day if this is what I get to do, but for now, I'm happy just making every piece that I do 
make on the side. And I'm gonna keep reinvesting in tools and keep practicing because I still think I'm not great. I think I'm good, but I can always grow. There's so many more techniques that I wanna learn. I wanna make wedding jewelry. I wanna set smaller stones. I wanna use a microscope. I wanna learn to cast. There's too much that I wanna learn how to do for me to ever get bored. And so whatever happens with this, I'm okay with it. I'm okay if it's a full-time thing. I'm okay if it's a side gig because it has been for the last two years and I've been happy. So that's been my, my journey with this. Today is May 29th and now as we sit on May 31st, I'll be closing everything down. I'll be closing my store for a few months because we're going to move back to the States. We're going to be moving to Idaho and so my workbench, everything will be on a boat for a few months and so I have to pause everything and then reset up the business in the States. But yeah, this is where I'm at and I just want to share that you don't have to wait to take a class or to be formally taught or pay all that money to take a class or an online course and there are a lot of good online courses out there and, and I don't want to steer you away from them um, because it can give you a good head start. It's always helpful to have extra information to get you a little bit further ahead. I think too often people wait because they think, oh, I need to save a thousand dollars first and pay for this online course or pay for this class before I start, before I buy the hammer and the saw, or before I buy the silver, you know, I need to take a class, or I need to watch a million YouTube videos. You don't. You don't. Just buy the basics, start practicing, start watching YouTube videos, start Googling. Anytime you run into a problem, stop. Google, YouTube, and just be persistent. Just don't give up. Don't, don't, don't give up. Be persistent. When you run into a problem, look it up and just keep going. And remember that your work doesn't have to be perfect to sell it. Again, I never ever would have gotten here if I waited until any of my work was perfect. Even now, I don't feel like my stuff's always perfect, but I always strive for the best that I can do and, and making things as perfect as I can. But don't wait until things are perfect to start selling them because this is very expensive to get into. You're gonna need tools and materials and all those things. So start small. Once you feel like it's good, start selling it and then reinvest all that money back into yourself. I just want people to take away from this that like, I am not special. I did not have a design bone in my body. There was nothing unique about me getting to do this that you couldn't do it too if this is something that you're wanting to do. I hope this helps and if you need anything or if you have any questions, I'll help you as much as I can. I don't always do everything right or perfectly and and thankfully, there's so many people watching my videos that have been doing this for so long. They give me such helpful advice. I learn something new every day from someone's comments on here about what I could be doing better, how I should be using my tools. I've been using some of these wrong, by the way. Um, so just get started. So yeah, that was my journey and I hope it continues for many more years. I can't wait to see how this all goes in the States. Um, very, very excited for this change. I hope you guys have a good weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.